Welcome to the Life Handmade Podcast with Scrapbook.com. This is the show for paper crafters, and I'm your host today, Jessica Harrington. Today on the podcast, we have the admirable and bold Becca Feekin joining us. Becca is a well-traveled woman who has lived in many different parts of the world. She was born in France, but now calls Florida home, where she has been for the past 30 years or so. Her career began in hotel sales and marketing, but in 2008, she found her passion for card making and started a blog called The Amazing Paper Grace. Eventually, Becca's blog led to her getting the opportunity to design her first die in 2012 with Spellbinders. Now she has created entire collections of dies and they're gorgeous and with Spellbinders and you can find them all at scrapbook.com as well. Welcome, Becca. Well, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have this time with you virtually. You have been to our studios before, and now we have you on our podcast. I know. Pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I gave a little introduction about, about you, but I'd like to know a little bit more of the details. So I'd like to just start by describing that, that time that you transitioned from your career in hotel to how that transition happened into this industry, into card making and uh, working with your hands and crafting? Well, actually, um, when I had a corporate career, I was also a passionate crafter then, but it just seemed like I never had time. I'm going to say that I was more of a collector, as many of us are, than uh, someone who actually had time to sit down and do, you know, uh, crafting on a consistent basis. And uh, what happened is uh, my husband was very, very ill during that time, and I kind of had to make a heart call, uh, and I ended up leaving my job simply because uh, his condition was real grave, and um, to be honest, he had cancer, and uh, we knew that he was going to pass away from that cancer, so... I just decided that rather than have to make a choice of if I was going to go to work or go to the hospital, I always wanted to be there for him in case he needed me. So I did. I left my corporate job, which I absolutely loved, and um, became a, a, a caretaker pretty much. And uh, when I became a caretaker, we were very, very much homebound. So um, really just sitting around the house waiting for things to happen. And that's when I actually hopped on the computer and saw that there were people making cards and they had blogs. And I didn't know that this had happened around me and I, I didn't know how I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I got very, very interested in it. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, these people are crafting every day. They're making cards every day. And so I took the plunge and I started a blog, which if anyone knows me, it is so not my MO. <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean exactly? Why I am this really so different. I am basically a shy person. And so to be out there at all just wasn't something I was pushing to do. But I did it from an accountability standpoint. I had all these supplies that I had amassed. And I said, even in one of my first blog posts, this if even this is just for me, it's going to be enough. You know, I'm just going to start by using the supplies I have and I'm going to post them. And it was just really kind of wild. What happened is I got um, a little bit of encouragement from somebody who was kind of big in the industry as a, a card maker. And I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, she was my idol. Wow. And so, um, I, you know, that encouragement was all it took. And I thought, I can do this. I could do this. And then people really started flocking. I know that sounds extreme, but it was really flocking to my, my blog. And so I really found my way in the heart of a community that kept me afloat. And given that it was a time where it was so sad in my household, to have them holding me up was amazing. I mean, I thought every day, I am so very blessed. And um, so I grew with the community. And 
uh, looking back on it now, I have uh, I have counted on that community so many times to lift me up, and they've done it every single time. So wow. that just, you know, that wound its way into card making, that wound its way into finding community, that wound its way into getting some confidence. And about then, I bought my first uh, nested dies. Now, I was no stranger to other dies, to uh, steel rule dies, but uh, I found my first nested dies, and they were spellbinders. And okay. um I actually bought um, like eight sets, you know, and during those days, that was, that would have been a big deal. But I immediately yes. started making things from those sets. And I, I, I use them in every way you could. Every permutation of that die I tried and it did get the attention of Spellbinders. They mm-hmm. reached out to me, which at this point I didn't even know was possible. And they just said, we really love what, we've seen you do with our dies. If we were to send you more dies, would you work with them? And I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) And so I did. And I actually went on to their uh, design team and then um, began to dream of what you could do with dies. And Mm -hmm. eventually um, I approached them and I just said, you know, I think I can do this. I, I would really like to try if I could just try and you and I could just show you. And um, I'm really tickled to say that that die um, came into being. It was manufactured in 2012, and it was just uh, discontinued. So wow, it, that first die that you were yeah, able to design. Yeah, it lived a long, long life. <laughs> wow. Do you Can you please share an image of that die and cards you made with that very first die for us so we can add those to the show notes? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, I'll write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that particular die was um, filigree delight and it really um, it it gave me a a sense of confidence that is with me even today wow yeah that first one well thank you that is like so inspirational and you do have that you have that style that you're known for it's intricate yet not overly so like it's it's there's layers it's beautiful functional people know you for that style yeah I do like classic you know I like stuff that when you look back at it um you hope that it's going to be in style five years from now or six years from now so I do call it romantic and I call it clean classic Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like what that shouldn't look like a year. Someone looking at it shouldn't think, oh, that says 2017 or that says 2007. It's like, oh, that's just a beautiful handcrafted card. Absolutely. Yeah. So I know that you had said that you, when you worked in your corporate uh, past, that you did um, craft or try to craft, you didn't have as much time. So it sounds like you always were a crafter, obviously not to the extent that you are now with a career in, in this industry. So thinking back, what is your very first experience crafting when you were younger? Well, I actually um, lived in the Philippines. My father was in the military and we actually did two t- tours there. Wow. And so um, that was just one of, uh, it was a great experience in my life. But um, being a young person there, uh, my mother did not work. So she became the troop leader for um, a Girl Scout troop. And um, we did a lot. We were a very active troop. And I had never been in the Girl Scouts before, but she decided she was going to lead it. And she's quite crafty. She's she's a, an exquisite seamstress. And uh, so in order to uh, take all the trips that we took or to go camping for the summer, we actually had to raise the money ourselves. And so we would have these craft bazaar items. And this particular year, it was a stuffed dog. Um, and the adults sewed the dog, but we ended up stuffing it and putting the buttons on the eyes. Cute. And 
And I guess what was notable for me is that they sold like hotcakes. You know, oh. we overmade the amount of money that we needed. It actually financed several trips, but it was not like a set bazaar that you'd have on one day. It was like a campaign where you would sell this item for um, a month or two. And we just, we couldn't make them fast enough. And I just remembered at that time thinking the value of handmade, thinking, oh, look, people want this. And I think it was one of those marking points in my life where uh, it immediately put me on board the crafting train. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Because, I mean, you were young and you thought, well, there's stuffed animals in the store next yeah. door. Why are these selling? And you were able to identify that there's, you can't, it's priceless. You can't yeah. really put a price on it. Yeah. That's well, really and it, cool. And it also made me know I, I can do this or I can participate in this. And I think that when you're that young, you know, the adults do all of this stuff, but because we were so encouraged, and here again, that's kind of a pivotal word in my life is encouragement. Yeah. Since we were encouraged to be a part of the making process, it, it, it honestly made me believe, oh, I can do this. That's what you do when you want something. You just go make it. You just that's go what do it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, so what? is the most, because you've had this long life of crafting and appreciating creativity, what is the most meaningful, if you had to choose the most, the most meaningful handmade project that you yourself have created? Maybe you still have it. Maybe you gave it away. Okay. There is a book that I made. I am heavy into journals and, um, You know, I've got a million journals. I've got journals that I bought, but um, I actually have a die that makes a book. And uh, I wanted to make something that's lasting, that is kind of like a legacy craft that you can leave in a box or, you know, it it just, when people look at it, it means you. They look at it. So just, I poured my heart into making this journal um, it's got the Coptic, uh, sig- you know, stitching and the signatures and everything. I embroidered um, some motifs to go on it. And it's got a linen cover. And, uh, you know, I tea dyed all the paper. And it was just such a, it was such a wonderful project to savor that honestly, when I got done with it, I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I made that. And um, I liked it so much, I ended up teaching a class on it in Canada, and um, everybody else liked it. It was just one of those projects that you make for yourself where you indulge and you put everything in it. You don't spare a second on, you know, kind of lavishing love and care and detail. And then what you come up with is something that you're going to remember for a long time. And so that's what that project was. Yeah. So it was a little journal and uh, I still have it. And it's just one of the things I like to lay out and I pick it up and thumb through it all the time. So you still have it. It still brings you joy. Can we share a photo of that journal with our listeners? Absolutely. I would love to to send you pictures of that. I want to see it. I want to see that stitching and how big it is. It sounds gorgeous. I can kind of picture it, but I need to see it now. I just need to see it. Um, Okay, so then switching gears, but very related. What is the most meaningful handmade gift that you yourself have received from someone else? Well, and that is such a simple one. First of all, I love getting cards. There is just nothing more magical about getting handmade and, um, you know, opening it up. And so I happened to get a card from my husband and, you know, he was, he, he was somebody who, who supported me in what I did, but he didn't necessarily get involved. If I said to him, hey, can you cut out this paper for me? He would help me cut out the paper. But other than that, you know, he didn't seem to be paying attention to me. But what I didn't know is he was very much paying attention. I did know that over time, a lot of times he would say to me, why did you do it that way? And I, I just wouldn't even think of it when he when he said that to me. And then another time he'd go, well, how come you use this instead of you use that? And I didn't realize that he was taking notes. And oh. so one Valentine's Day, he floored me um, with a card that 
I, if he had sent the card to me in the mail, I would have sworn that he got somebody else to make it. But (gasps) he had taken his time. He had taken all the notes and he made me a card like I make. He made me a card like what he knew I like to give. And so I call that the language of love. You know, he was giving to me what he knows I love to give. And I'm just going to tell you my heart melted. I looked at it and I still have the card. um, And I look at it and I still don't know how he did it, but he did. (laughs) And he gave it to me and my heart absolutely melted. He snuck in, found the supplies Figured out how to use the supplies and pieced everything together when you weren't there or asleep or something. Just the thought of him making it is so special. Yes. Yes. Just picturing him like going out and doing that. I love that. Well, please tell me that we can see a photo of that too. You have so many things I want to see. I do. I do have a photo of that. I have kept that on my blog and that is probably one of the most popular (laughs) blog posts on my blog. Like the second he gave it to me, I was so shocked and surprised that I sat down and wrote a post and my readers were like, oh my goodness, everybody's heart melted. My heart still melts over it. Oh my goodness. I think that that's one of those, if you're a paper crafter or a card maker, that's your dream. Yeah. That your spouse or partner will make you with your supplies something and give it back. Like that's just like, you couldn't have even imagined it. Yes. Yes. I agree. So Aww. yes, I would love to share that. Oh, thank you. Okay. So you do have an upcoming release. So what is the inspiration behind, and tell us a little bit about the upcoming release of your new collections with Spellbinders. Okay, well, um, there are always lots of releases popping up, but what is popping up very soon is Christmas. I mean, everybody's in the middle of Christmas. And so what I have coming is um, Christmas Cascade. Okay. And what Christmas Cascade is, is it's a twist on a waterfall card. Um, Everyone knows that um, I like to design something today that works with something I designed a year ago. And so um, I designed a shadow box collection uh, a little over a year ago. So the waterfall, the cascade, the Christmas cascade is something that was designed to number one, fit into a shadow box. So waterfall is an interactive, you pull it and the layers kind of ripple back. But it's so cute in this in the in the previous shadow box dies that uh, are are one of my older collections. But also when I design, I try to keep everybody in mind. There are people who will love interactive. There are people who will love uh, what they remember of shadow box, mm-hmm. and then there are people who want it plain. Right. And so all of these elements are things that you can pull out and use on their own. All of the motifs are three inches by three inches. So they're going to go on a card, you know, an A2 card. They'll go on an A7 card. They will go in the shadow box or they will just rest on the waterfall. So I am very very excited. Yeah, Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I'm excited to see those and those will be on scrapbook.com. So currently right now, What would you say is your go-to or cannot live without crafting product that's just like you grab it every time? Well, you know, anyone who knows me knows that my cards are die-centric. I mean, everything is about the dies and the layering. But I have like every time I create, every time I design everything and then I make like the first card, I kind of have a ritual that I go through. And that is that I make it out of cream and gold. So my go-to Ooh. things are gold cardstock, that gold mirror board. I cannot uh-huh. live without that. Oh my gosh. And then cream paper. And so normally the first classic clean romantic card I make is gold and cream. And You know, it's just, it's one thing to say that, and then it's another thing to see it. Mm -hmm. Once I see it, once I've made that first card, I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. That's why I designed the die. Okay, wow. And then after that, yeah. Have you ever thought about why that like gold mirror and cream, do you think it has anything to do with 
things you saw or places you lived. I mean, I think about hearing that you were born in France. I'm like, where did this come from? Like, where did that style come from? I wonder. I I think, you know, I I surf, you know, on Insta with all of the elegant stuff and wedding stuff and and uh, gifting stuff. And I think that's a predominant color in the elegant niche, really. Yes, and it so is. So I think that's where I get it from. But, um, you know, any kind of foil. Foil to me is just uh, such a luxury. And, mm-hmm. you know, just having hints of that uh, with the cream to me, it's not overwhelming and it is very classic. I think I honed on it and adopted it because, honestly, if I make a card today that's cream and gold, it is still in style four mm-hmm. or five years from now. And I love that. Wow. Really good advice. We need to stock up on the ivory and some gold or foil cardstock for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have, so before we got on this call, um, you mentioned that creativity could be considered a life buoy. So we've touched on some different elements of your life and kind of what happened with your husband, but I want the listeners to hear what you have to say about that. What does that mean that creativity can be a life buoy for, for you or for someone? Well, and you know, this is something I've, I've learned in retrospect. I I don't know when it was happening, if I knew, but over time I could see what my reactions were. And it's, it's led me to that conclusion that creativity is a life buoy. Um, I am a real resilient person. I really, really am. But when my husband passed away, I was lost. And what that looked like for me is I looked normal. I could go out and buy groceries. I could go pay a bill. And then I could sit down to my craft table. Well, the honesty um, or what was really happening is I wouldn't remember paying a bill. I wouldn't remember having a conversation with somebody. I wouldn't remember going to get groceries, but I can remember everything about a card that I made. I can Mm. remember how I felt that day. I can remember what I thought that day. I can remember pouring my heart out over this thing that I'm going to give. Mm -hmm. And that perked up in my mind. And I thought this is important. There's some Mm -hmm. reason why this is happening. I used that to my advantage for a long time. The grief process was so very, very long for me Mm -hmm. that I knew I'm going to get there. I don't know when I'm going to get there, but I'm going to get there by sitting down at my craft table because I know I remember this and I know Hmm. that I'm feeling when I'm doing this. And this is kind of a relationship that I have learned in every up and down of the roller coaster that has been life for me for the last 20 years. You know, when things get hard, I create. And I had so many widows reach out to me and just say, how are you doing it? And I wore that as a badge of honor that they would reach out to me to find out what can I do to make it through. And, you know, so I specifically uh, talk to widows and email widows and and tell them, this is where you put your grief and this is going to work for you. It is a way of self-care you owe it to yourself. And it's really um, like therapy. I'm, Hmm. you know, I'm just not even, there's no shame behind that at all. Like, you know, I learned that if I could use that, I could get through whatever it was. And so uh, over time, I've called it a life boy, and I've clung on to the ability to craft and to have the community that I have. And it's just, I'm so very blessed that it has enabled me to get through some really trying times. And I wholeheartedly encourage people to go down that path. Wow. To use it as a therapy. When things swirled around you, that was the constant, that was the therapy. It reminds you kind of like of your touchstone. Um, Yes. Yes. That's beautiful. At some point in my husband's illness, we had to go to San Antonio, Texas for him to have a bone marrow transplant. And so we had an RV at the time and we took the RV and I didn't know we would be there for three months, but basically the RV sat in the, um, it was on an RV camp, but the camp was at 
almost in the parking lot of the hospital. Okay. And he was in intensive care. And I was on several design teams at the moment or at that time, but I would go to the hospital during the day and then come back and just craft my heart out during the night. And I just am going to say it's the only way I could have got my way through. I, I was just very lucky that we had an RV. I had a craft room in the RV and that I was able to do that instead of just sitting there worrying. Right. Yeah. Right. You were there with him, which you identified that was important. You quit yeah. your job. You were there with him, yeah. but able to have your your therapy too, because yeah. it's very intensive to be a caregiver emotionally or physically or both. It is. It is. Wow. Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Becca. I, I didn't know some of those elements of your story. And I think some listeners too will have learned and to remind them that crafting can be our life buoy and can be our therapy and can heal us um, slowly and surely in the right healthy way. I yes. love that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your stories with us today, Becca. Your strength and resilience is so inspiring to all of the listeners. If you'd like to know more about Becca Feekin, please visit our show notes at scrapbook.com forward slash podcast, where you can find links to the topics we discussed today and all of those fun photos that we mentioned of those items. Along with Becca's products on scrapbook.com, you can find over 40,000 unique items. And remember, we are the number one online store for paper crafters. When you shop at scrapbook.com, you also enjoy award-winning customer service, great prices, a huge selection of products, and super fast shipping. You also benefit from nearly 200,000 real product reviews from crafters just like you. You'll find endless inspiration and meaningful connection in the scrapbook.com forums, the scrapbook.com gallery, and remember to take those free online classes from the comfort of your own home. Be sure to subscribe to the Life I Made podcast in your favorite app and enjoy our other episodes as well. Please consider leaving a review for this podcast. It really does help other crafters like you find it easily. Happiness is Life Handmade. I drive doodles of eccentric faces in the margin space.